Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Awaken the Wonder. I'm your host today, Evangelist Caleb Wampler, and we are excited to help awaken the wonder of your relationship with Jesus and walking in the faith. And I have an amazing guest with me today with Fireborn Ministries, Jared Lasky, and he is uh, seeing the Lord do incredible things all around the nation as well as the nations, and God is doing incredible things in his life and ministry uh, he's flowing in the supernatural, uh, the fire of God's on his life, and I can already, uh, just in my conversation before we started the camera today, just feel the presence of God coming off of his life. So you're going to be very blessed today, and as he talks to us, I know he's going to encourage you in your journey. So welcome, Jared Lasky. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing great, Caleb. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be on Awaken the Wonder and see what God is doing in power through you. So thank you so very much for having me on as a guest. I'm excited. Yeah, awesome. I look forward to kind of picking your brain today, but then, uh, you know, we can learn uh, things cerebrally and through knowledge and watch God do things, uh, you know, in that way. But your spirit is uh, is full of fire, man. So <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that Amen. watch the show that um, that are, listen and want to get activated in the supernatural, and and uh, I know that is what your life is all about. So look forward to asking you some questions today and how you steward that. Um, now, Jared, you have a podcast here on the Charisma Podcast Network, and uh, it's called Adventures in the Spirit. Can you tell us a little bit about your podcast and uh, what what you're doing with that podcast? Yeah, Adventures in the Spirit is not just information, but it's impartation, it's revelation, and it's activation. We've seen people receive Jesus through it. We've seen people receive the wonderful, precious baptism with the Holy Spirit. We've had people see angels and see in the Spirit through it. Uh, the podcast is a lot of fun. I've interviewed some amazing people the last couple of years, and it's just amazing to see what God is doing through it. So it's I, I interview a number of people, and apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, people who do what Jesus did, and I'm just having way too much fun with it, and it's exciting to see people listening to it or viewing it from around the world. So I've been doing that for the last three years on the Charisma Podcast Network, with no plans to stop because it's too much fun, brother. It's too much fun. I love it. So guys, make sure you guys go over to Adventures in the Spirit, wherever you listen to podcasts. You definitely want to get behind what God is doing with Jared. Can you tell everybody where they can follow you, the ministry, your website, any resources you may have so people can stay connected with you? I'd, I'd love to. It's a, it's a pleasure. My f ministry is Fireborn Ministries because it's dedicated to the Holy Spirit. Born of fire, fireborn, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So they could go to firebornministries.com. The podcast is available on all podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, Charisma Podcast Network, just like yours. And uh, I've also got some resources on Amazon.com, the Spirit Empowered Journal, where people can study the Bible and listen to the Holy Spirit. And I've got e-courses as well on FirebornMinistries.com and CharismaCourses.com on prophecy, on healing, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've seen 2,000 people go through that e-course on CharismaCourses.com alone. Uh, and people are receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit remotely through that. So it's exciting, brother. I love that. Yeah. And friends, make sure you do that today. It's always an honor to find people to run with that are uh, carrying uh, the, the presence of God on their lives, and that can help you get activated. Uh, we know that this thing is not always just taught, but it is caught, and we have to catch what God is doing with people that are burning. I know when I talk with my friends, I'm always uh, telling them that I'm doing everything in my life to hang out with people that have that oil on their life, oil on their teaching, oil on what they are doing, because we want the presence of God saturating us at every level. So that is what uh, Jared is doing. And so I encourage you guys to, again, go over and check out his podcast, Adventures in the Spirit, and uh, go to Fireborn Ministries, and you can hear and learn more about what they're doing and their e-courses as well. But um, let's get into your story a little bit, Jared, and then we'll talk about what God's doing with you. But um, how did you end up coming to the Lord? And uh, then from there, how did you end up going into the ministry? That's a great question. I, I grew up in the Christian church, 
but God was speaking to me, even though my church did not believe in the spiritual gifts. Uh, God was speaking to me through dreams at the age of 12 or 13. Uh, I didn't know what to do with that, but I just knew that God was speaking. Uh, but I rebelled as a teenager, uh, but it was through a supernatural experience when I was 17 years old. I'd had a burst appendix and ended up in the hospital, but I felt the hand of Jesus on my head for the first time in my life, and I felt the power of God flow through me. And I started having these knowings and prophetic intuitions about people coming and going to the hospital, who was coming to visit me, and then the dream started expanding. So... I knew I needed to get my life right with Jesus, so I went into YWAM for about a year. But it was in YWAM, November 14th of 1998, that I, I received a baptism with the Holy Spirit for several hours. It was the, one of the most incredible supernatural experiences of my life. As, as I spoke in tongues, as I prayed, worshiped, laughed, uh, the power of God surged through me. Uh, you know, ele Electricity, waves of love, waves of grace. And I knew I could never be the same from that experience. So it's through YWAM that I heard the, the call of God to go into ministry. So I went into, into Bible college. Uh, I did suffer a tragedy from the death of one of my brothers when I was 20 years old, going into my sophomore year of Bible college. But through that, I pressed into the presence of Jesus like never before, jumped into a re revival movement, planted a church at 19, uh, in time met my lovely bride, and just started moving in, in love towards Jesus and then love towards other people. Um, so that's kind of like the short story of it because there's been a lot of things in my life that have been pretty brutal, but through the brutal stuff, even on deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan as a Marine, you know, God was still speaking and God was still using me. Uh, so that was always encouraging. So it's been, uh, you know, just always pursuing his presence. That's what it's all about. No matter how, what happens in life, you know, just continue to pu push through and, and pray through and spend time with him and he will change you and transform you. So that's what it's been for the last 22, 23 years of my life. And no matter what's going on, just continuing to move towards him in love and minister to people in love, no matter where I'm at, whether it's a coffee shop or in the Marine Corps or overseas in, in Afghanistan, Iraq, or right here in the United States, just loving God and loving people no matter what, and seeing Him work through us. Amen? Yeah, come on. I love that. And now, you said that you uh, you lost your brother. Uh, you were deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan. I can only imagine the loss, the suffering, the pain that you have went through in your life. And there are many people you know, obviously in this season that are continuing to suffer, go through many uh, issues with bouts of pain, loss, all of the continued uh, things connected to corona, job losses, the economy, everything else that's going on here stateside, but also globally. Um, as we've traveled, we have a lot of people that listen around the world, and um, there are a lot of people that are just suffering right now. Uh, you are no stranger to this. How have you connected with the Lord in the suffering and, and watch the, the wonder of your relationship with him be awakened, because it sounds like uh, you've got the secret sauce, brother. <laughs> I think the secret sauce is total commitment, total surrender to Jesus. Spending time with him, you know, there's, there's a, a cost to the anointing. There's a cost to the anointing. And people don't like to talk about this a lot. People want, bless me, bless me, bless me. But the cost is time with him no matter what. It's time, hours upon hours of worship, of praise in his midst, worshiping him. And yeah, you're right. I've been through a number of different things in, in life. I was healed of PTSD. Uh, and my testimony is in Joan Hunter's book, Miracles for Veterans, uh, because when I was going through the, the darkness, when I was going through all that stuff that I had to work through, I knew Jesus was the answer. So I had to spend time in his presence, spend time worshiping him, uh, spend time calling out to him, asking him to have mercy on me, spending time you know, praying in tongues, spending time just in his midst no matter what, and claiming my healing. And one of the keys to healing is to also turn around and pray healing over other people. Say you're asking God for a healing, 
but you're still not healed. Say you got back issues or something, and you're asking you know, God to heal your back. Well, get prayer from someone, get prayer for a number of people, but turn around and go lay hands on people yourself and see God heal people through you. In time, you'll start seeing, hey, you may have received your healing while you were praying for someone. Uh, so th those are some of the keys that I've learned over time. Just, you know, total surrender, total commitment, spending time in His, His presence, spending time in His Word, and then going and doing what Jesus did, no matter what, no matter how you feel, just being a conduit for His presence. Now, many people don't feel uh, like they're supposed to do something or want to do something or they're feeling afraid. But it sounds like you're saying to punch that thing in the face and do it anyway. <laughs> Can you talk to me about getting out of the funk? Because as I'm traveling around, I hear it often. People are in the funk right now. They're enduring. They're going through things. They're just kind of stuck. And they're trying to figure out, what do I do to get moving again? Or waiting for things to get back to the way they used to be or, you know, and, 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 and so they just feel like they're kind of stuck. They're watching, they're waiting to see what's going to happen. And uh, I just would love for you to address that and talk to, talk to our audience about that. Well, I think that really with everything that's been going on around the world, everything has changed. Everything has changed. The church has had to figure things out. Some churches had to go online. Other churches have closed you know, uh, which is very tragic. Uh, some of these things have been um, been forced upon us, and there are people who are suffering. There are kids who are, are are depressed around the world, especially with school lockdowns or um, just you know, whether it's been coronavirus, whether it's been the economy. You know, there there the if we look at the statistics. Like the youngest kid to commit suicide in the state of Virginia was like eight years old because of the lockdowns. The church needs to rise up and be a voice, be a voice no matter what, be standing for truth uh, no matter what. Like we need to preach the gospel and, and uh, you know, I, I'm part of Harvest International Ministries and Harvest International Ministries under Shayon, they, they took the state of California to court and the Supreme Court of the United States said that lockdowns are unconstitutional and that if the government, any governors ever try to lock down churches ever again, they will be found in contempt of court. And that's because of Shayon and Harvest International Ministries. The church should always stand up and be a voice of truth and a light because right now, brother, there are people who are suffering Right now, we're going to see more people needing healing, inner healing, and deliverance than ever before, and the church needs to be ready for this. I, I think you and I both are seeing this. People are calling out of the blue. People are sending messages and emails looking for deliverance because they've been depressed. They've been uh, in lockdown mode for so long. They, they haven't been around people. You and I both know that we need to gather with the saints. It's there that we're encouraged, comforted, and edified through the prophetic word, through the word of God. And so we need to just show people that the church is the light, and, and people will start coming to, to us as we also go out to them. We need to be intentional and go out to them and, and lay hands on them, pray over them, listen to them no matter what. And if anything ever comes down the pipeline ever again, you know, the church needs to be the voice of truth and the light. Um, I don't necessarily want to go down that rabbit trail a little bit, but we have the truth. We, we speak the truth in love, and we need to show that love no matter what. Uh, like when, when Peter and John were, were told, hey, don't go preach in the name of Jesus. They said, hey, we have to obey God rather than man. We have to obey God rather than man. And they, they, God used them in signs and wonders. You know, Peter's shadow or the anointing around him healed the sick on the streets, on the mats. You know, uh, we're going to start seeing a new level of anointing and revelation in these days because a number of people have been praying the last couple of years. And even though things have shifted, you know, the church needs to shift and just go full on, you know, glorifying Jesus with his banners of truth over them and point people to the way, the truth and the life, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That is so good. And being the church, realizing that God, uh, you know, even in Matthew 16, 19, 
Uh, Jesus says, I've given you keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And just this activation piece of us being the believer, being the body of Christ, speaking for truth in life and using the keys that God has given us to destroy the works of the devil. You know, people need that. And I love, I love your heart for this. And so friends, if you're in a funk today, break out of it in Jesus' name. Do it when you don't feel like it. Pray, sow seeds, uh, pray for the sick, pray for those that are hurting and uh, give lavishly and abundantly. Watch God do something supernatural in your life. Now, and, and I believe you're going to begin to see this manifest in your life as well, just like Jared's talking about. And um, I want to just ask you uh, kind of a kind of switch topics completely here. And uh, you have been in a place where uh, you've been able to be activated in uh, seeing in the spirit, uh, having angels manifest in the meetings you're going to, and even even through your online platforms. And um, a lot of people find this subject to be very curious. We actually do some retreats uh, over on Prayer Mountain in North Carolina, and I've had a lot of people that have their eyes opened up to see in the Spirit. And uh, so I've had a, a lot of fun in the ministry as well, where people start to see Jesus or encounter Him and have different moments with Him and having the angels of the Lord min uh, minister to them, people seeing things in the Spirit, signs and wonders. So our audience is very familiar with this topic, but I always love to ask uh, whenever somebody is in that vein, because not everybody seems to be flowing in that all the time, uh, how how you get activated? How what was your journey like to begin seeing in the spirit, and uh, and how did that break open for you? Yeah, I think I'll go back to when I was about twelve or thirteen. God was giving me dreams, but they seemed a little more faint. You know, they weren't as clear as they as I think they should have been. But He was still speaking to me. But it wasn't until I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like right before that, I had my first ever open vision. And, and God really spoke to me through that open vision. And then within a week or two, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then after that, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was like a, a doorway into more adventures, into more of the presence of God. It, it's not, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been, been treated as if that's it. Like, boom, once you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've got speaking in tongues, that's it, you're done. No, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a doorway into the more of God. So for me, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I started spending a lot of time in the presence of Jesus, no matter what, no matter how I felt, you know, setting aside that time, worshiping him, glorifying him. And then he starts teaching you the prophetic in the secret place. I mean, he did it with Jeremiah asking the prophet Jeremiah, what do you see? He did it with Ezekiel. You know, he starts training us in the school of prophets in his presence. Like that's the best place to go. But it, it's always accelerated when we go to the schools of prophecy and we're, we're in an environment or an atmosphere of it. Those things accelerate. But the first place is in the presence of God. So it was in that place that he was teaching me and training me uh, how to see, how to hear, how to smell in the spirit. He was activating my spiritual senses and it always stemmed from intimacy with him, first and foremost, intimacy with him. But in time, I jumped into a revival movement uh, that, that lasted for a couple of years with protracted meetings. You name the, the apostle or prophet in the late 90s, early 2000s, they came through. It was an atmosphere of heaven. And, and then in time, I started learning the principles and then teaching the principles, uh, showing other people how to see in the spirit, how to hear God's voice. Because really, prophecy is hearing God's voice and speaking what you're hearing, speaking what He is saying. And all of us can prophesy. All of us can, can encourage, comfort, and edify. But not all of us are called to a prophetic ministry or the office of prophet. But everybody can encourage, comfort, and edify because we can all hear God's voice one way or another. And I love, Caleb, I love encouraging people how to discover how God speaks to them and then use their spiritual gifts and whatever spiritual gift that is. I think that's one of my passions is to see people activated in what God has called them to do. So I hope that that answered your question. Yeah, no, that's, that's powerful. And uh, again, I love just the, the return and the cry back to intimacy with Christ. I mean, that has been the heartbeat of our ministry since day one. We always tell people, 
you know, the crusades are the public vehicle that everybody sees, you know, with what we're doing, but it's that, that's that return to come back to Christ and to just love Jesus and to dive into relationship with him. That's what our hearts burn for. So again, everything flows from that place. Everything flows from, from being with him. And, uh, and again, I love that. Yeah. I love that answer, honestly. So um, in this season, what is God speaking to you right now with the state of where things are? And, you know, there's people listening today. They want hope. They're trying to figure out what the next step is. Some people are like, is this the end of the world? And others are just, you know, trying to figure out what they should be doing in this season. What's God putting on your heart right now? And uh, and what can people be expecting right now in this season? Well, what can people be expecting you know, hope in Jesus, no matter what. People need to find their tribe and love their tribe. You know, surround yourself with amazing Christian people, people who think and operate and are activated in, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because even if the economy tumbles, I mean, Caleb, just the other day, I see it on Twitter. I see it on all the social media platforms. You know, stock markets are down. People are losing tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, jobs are low. But you know what? We can hide in the vine. We abide in the vine who is Christ. And we need to surround ourselves with people who move in power, who move in signs and wonders. We need to sow into these ministries. We need to walk with these people. We need to ask, you know, be mentored by them and know that God can use us to you to for signs and wonders now uh we need to build a community we need to however that looks whatever that that community looks like and we need to go live the great commission with these people because we're going to see signs and wonders we're going to see food multiplication i mean i've seen that on the mission field in honduras in the dominican republic food multiply and miracles, if miracles can happen there, miracles can definitely happen here in the United States of America. Too often we think that we're too intelligent, too educated for these things. But no, we're going to see multiplication. We're going to see food banks even where, where they, they think that they've given out all the products, but the shelves are still full. You know, we're going to see these things taking place uh, more and more every day. And people need to spend time in the Word of God. Fear not. Uh, I, I think I saw a meme the other day, so I don't know who posted it, but it was a meme. Fear not or do not be afraid is in the Bible about 365 times. That's, that's a year. 360, fear not. Even You know, I lost a part-time job during the first lot parts of the lockdown in, in March of 2020, you know, but I didn't fear I knew that in time I'd get back to work. I knew that I had to shift things, and that was about the time that my ministry expanded and tens of thousands of people started listening in. You know, and that was a blessing. So if you're in Christ, I believe you're going to be blessed. And even if the economy, you know, you're you're out of a job temporarily, you know, we work diligently in the kingdom of God. You know, reposition yourself, re-angle yourself, and um just launch out in a step of faith to what God has. So, Caleb, it's not the end of the world. You know, um, I, I don't want to discuss theology or anything, but really the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is here now within us. You know, Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we get to activate heaven all around us and, and get to see Jesus do incredible things through us for his glory. And we're going to see more of that. Uh, so I want people to not be afraid, spend time in the presence, spend time in the Word, surround themselves with a great community of people that are activated in signs and wonders and miracles, who love Jesus wholeheartedly, who are totally surrendered, totally committed to Him. And our, our best days are yet to come in the church. Even if things look a little dark or bleak here on the mainstream media, you know, right now, shut that off. Don't listen to that. Those are false prophets, okay? The mainstream media are false prophets. Uh, we need to turn on the, the kingdom of God in our lives, activate the Holy Spirit, and, and get, our, get our fresh manna from the Word of God and just start walking and obeying what His Word says because our ministries, you know, um, we, we see it. 
You know, we, we see the favor, we see the blessing of God, and, and fresh manna is for everybody. So we just need to continue to obey the Great Commission, continue to pursue Jesus, and, and know that the best is yet to come. Revival and awakening. Caleb, you and I both, we're seeing it now. We're part of these revivals, not just around the world, but even online. And more is in store so the most exciting days are yet ahead, and we're going to be able to see that, brother. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I, I, I hear kind of two themes that are seeming to continue to come out, and it's what you're listening to and who you're surrounding yourself with. I remember growing up and uh, hearing my youth pastor would always say, show me your five closest friends, and I'll show you your future, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I, I'll read uh, some of the business forums now. And, you know, if you hang out with five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth. If you hang out with five people that are healthy, you're going to be the sixth. If you're going to, you know, who you surround yourself is so uh, with is so important. But the reason that's so important is because of what they're saying and doing. The actions of their life and the words that they speak are proclaiming uh, and, and uh, encouraging you in the good or the bad. I mean, the people you're connected to, the people you're in relationship with, your best friends, the people that are uh, surrounding you are going to have a direct effect on your experience of God or uh, or your encounters with the Lord or the things that are around you. And so I just, uh, I love that. And I think it's so true in this season. Uh, I think a lot of times our future is more dependent upon who we're with than uh, than than just what's happening on politicians or mainstream media or what's happening in the world. So I love that. And friends, I encourage you to get people in your life today that are going to push you to Jesus, that are going to push you to the secret place. So I love that. Jared, this has been an honor to have you today. And um, I would love for you again to just talk about uh, your podcast, Adventures in the Spirit. Uh, talk to us about uh, your ministry, Fireborn Ministries, where people can connect with your e-courses, any of your products, uh, books, resources. Just tell us everything you got, man, and people want to stay connected with you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so very much. It was an honor to be on Awaken the Wonder. So I hope that people's spiritual eyes are awakened in Jesus' name as we step out and see Jesus, a Jesus awakening. So I bless you, Caleb. So my ministry is Fireborn Ministries. My wife and I made it in 2012, uh, and we've been working on the media ministry. We've been blogging for Charisma and God TV since 2015, 2016. The podcast has been around since 2020. And, uh, you know, I've interviewed Sean Bowles, Patricia King, Elizabeth Time Fook, Bishop Bill Hammond. Uh, I interviewed the Toaches of the Next Gen Prophets, just all amazing people. Some of them are on the Charisma Podcast Network. Uh, others are, are not. But I, I just love to get a diverse uh, part of the body of Christ from around the world on the podcast about what God is saying today. And so people are activated. They hear stories of miracles, signs, and wonders and we activate people who are listening in or viewing to do the same thing, to, to do what Jesus did, because uh, it's not just information, but it's activation. Uh, we've had all kinds of amazing stories coming from around the world uh, uh, through that, and I love the Holy Spirit. If it weren't for the Holy Spirit, I would be, I, I, I'd be dead. I, honestly, I believe that if it weren't for what the Holy Spirit intervening in my life, uh, I wouldn't be here today. And because the baptism of the Holy Spirit was so amazing in my life, uh, that's, that's part of our ministry, to see people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and, and then to turn around and then do what the Holy Spirit is teaching them to do. So we have the e-courses on firebornministries.com, on charismacourses.com. We've got, um, I've got a co-authored book, Veronica's Hero. It's on Amazon. It's, a, it's about a, a lady who whose husband died in Afghanistan with an IED, from an IED blast in 2011, and, but then how God uh, was ministering to her so I, and how part of me was in her life. And then my kids wrote a book called Baby Boo Bear Goes to the Amusement Park. That was raising money for a discipleship program in Afghanistan. Uh, so my kids self-published that in 2020 during the lockdowns, wrote a book, self-published it, raised $20,000 for this discipleship program. So that's on Amazon. That's for um, kids. If you've got any kids up to age 10 or 12, you know, to, they could purchase that. And that goes towards the translation process. But because of current events 
over over there right now. Um, we've had to shift where, where those finances goes, but it still goes towards a great cause of discipleship materials. And then also I've got a journal, the Spirit and Power Journal, where people could study the Bible and listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's it's using the listening to the Holy Spirit, talking to Him, fellowshipping with Him as you study the Scripture, and that's on Amazon.com as well. And I've got another book that I've, I've completed, and there's probably going to be two or three more, but those are still yet to be published. I'm still looking for some publishers on that. And if that doesn't go well, I'll just self-publish them and step out in faith. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. And we do monthly webinars on the Holy Spirit, on the anointing, on the prophetic, on healing. Uh, so, some of the same stuff as you, Caleb. So uh, we live in some amazing days. It's all for Jesus. Amen. Praise God, brother. I love what you're doing. Uh, I love your heart. I love your passion. And I just love the excitement of walking in the spirit, intimacy with Christ and how it leads to supernatural life. So friends, that's what uh, that's what we are all about as well here with Awaken the Wonder. And so I hope that you've been encouraged today by our guest, Jared Lasky. And Again, where, what's the website people can go to to stay connected to your ministry? Firebornministries.com. So that's F-I-R-E-B-O-R-N, ministries, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S.com. Fireborn, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Awesome. You guys heard it from him. Firebornministries.com. Check him out. Listen to uh, Adventures in the Spirit with Jared Lasky on the Charisma Podcast Network. Friends, it's been an honor to have you with us today. Thanks again for tuning in. We're excited to bring more content to you tomorrow uh, on our daily show here with Awaken the Wonder. So make sure you stay connected to what God is doing and uh, awaken the wonder of your relationship with Jesus today. Until next time, friends, we'll see you soon.